So we're going to have a little fun now using the Inktense blocks and Inktense pencils. One of the great qualities of Inktense is that you can draw on fabrics with it. Um, silk, cotton, anything that's quite absorbent and not synthetic. Um, we're going to take a simple canvas bag today. So in preparation for this, I've got a piece of scrap card in the bag. And I've also put a few sheets of sketch pad paper over the top of the cardboard just to give us a nicer smooth surface and to reduce any of the texture of the cardboard itself. So we'll slide that in the bag and then we're ready to go. So we're going to start off by using a teal green ink tense block and I'm just going to use this to draw directly onto the canvas just dry with no water involved at all. So I'm going to use the edge here just to put in a big circle. So just going to draw quite a large circle here. Obviously it doesn't have to be an accurate circle. This is just freehand and it's just going to be an abstract shape anyway. Okay, this is just our basic outlines. I'm actually going to take that in and do another couple of circles inside that as well. Just whilst the bag's still dry, it just means it's nice and easy just to sketch that on. I'll take one more here, I think. And then maybe we'll take one off centre there. And I'll put a little hole off centre there in it. Okay, so there's a basic outline of what we're going to do on the back. Make sure that paper's underneath. Okay. I think what we'll do first actually is put in one of the sort of more fun and interesting textures. I'm going to pop that one down and pick up deep indigo. And I'm going to put in pretty strongly an outline around this circle with that. Give us a nice deep tone of colour there. As soon as we put the water on here, you'll see how these colours really burst to life. But for now, I'm just going to work dry. I'm going to take the slightly lighter blue and just work that in just inside the dark there. Okay, I'm also going to add that to that circle there because this is where it's going to be pretty dark later on, just so we know where the edge is going to be. I'm going to take some water on a brush and I'm going to work into these lines, start bringing the colour across into this whole area, I'm putting plenty of water on. And make sure this whole area is really, really wet. You can see as I'm putting the water on how the colour is really starting to leap from, from the fabric itself. How the colours of ink tents really come alive. And you add the water. A little bit of cotton under there, but never mind. I've given us a little bit of texture, quite like that. So what we've got to make sure we do is make sure that all the dry marks become saturated and wet, because it's when ink tents has been wet and then dried again, is that's when it becomes permanent. So as long as we make sure of that, we're going to be okay. Right, let's colour in the whole of this circle here with just water. Make sure it's really nice and wet. The more water that we have on it, the more intense pigment will disperse. Uh, the less water, obviously, the more intact you can keep the lines that you put down. There we go. That's nice and wet. 
So I'm going to actually take the yellow intense block now. And I'm going to take my craft knife and I'm actually going to start scraping onto that wet area. I'm just going to scrape generally all over this bit. We can just blow off the parts that aren't in the wet area. See as they hit the wet, they start dispersing, but we're just going to give them a little helping hand by dabbing a wet paintbrush over the top of some of them. A bit more water on than that, I think. We can always go over the top again. In fact, what I'm going to suggest we do is go over the top with a little bit of the uh, blue block as well. And we should get a nice green forming there. So whilst that's still wet, we'll make sure there's plenty water on there, take the blue and scrape a few flecks. Okay. I'm just going to pad the brush down into this area quite a bit make sure that the pigment is fully worked into the canvas. It's nice to see the colours there blending, so we've got a lovely beautiful green here now. Okay, so we've got a bit of a line here. What we're going to do is just to blend this in, we're going to work directly onto the wet area with the block itself. So I'm just going to take the lighter blue and just start working around the outline. You can see it's much more intense when you're working into a wet area. And I think I might just take the yellow there as well. Just so that really gets a good blend in. Right. Whilst that's still all wet, I'll just do a final little blend around that bit there. So a mixture of texture and really bold colour there. I think what we might just do a little bit more yellow over the top of that beautiful green colour. Um, I would say that's that bit nicely started off. You can add more if you want to. Okay, I think what we'll do now is just start working into the outer circles. So again, we're going to take the really dark deep indigo and I'm going to start working over the top of these two outer circles. We'll do one circle at a time, we'll fill it in and then move on to the outer circle. That's a pretty heavy layer there, we're going to wet all this. See how the pigment immediately starts pulling into where the water is. If you want a more accurate line, instead of allowing everything to spread out, which is quite nice, I think, particularly on this kind of work. If you're working on silk, perhaps, or something uh, which is a bit more loose, which allows the pigment to disperse quite a lot more, a tip that I've received from various people who do silk painting is to actually use uh, aloe vera gel instead of water because it takes the ink tents into the fabric, but it's just that little bit thicker, so you can control what you're doing a bit more. Right, okay. That's looking quite nice. 
Right, so once you've got the two outer rings filled in, we've just been going around with the yellow and the dark blue, just blending them over the wet area. Um, so it blends nicely and you get really intense colours. We're just going to move on to the centre. So I'm just going to blend that last bit in there. Let's go for this centre area. I think for this one actually, put a slight base layer down in the yellow. Just to give us a nice kind of glow as we put the water on. And then we're going to go over the top with a bit of blue around the edges so it all blends in nicely. And then I'm going to pick a pencil up, start adding some detail, I think. In fact, what's about it? Let's just take that yellow right across. Right, let's get that. We're just going to, in a similar way, just going to mark, keep the each circle outline really deep. Start to blend it in slightly there. I'm just going to keep it quite light here. So we're going to add more texture in with the pencils and also around that inner hole in the middle. Take the brush, just spread out this colour a little, and then we'll pick up the pencil and start working over the top. Right, so what have we got then? We've got a sea blue pencil. I'm just going to start Drawing directly onto all that wet area with the pencil. I'm just going to do wiggly lines. Nice contrast there between the seeping colours underneath and pretty strong lines of the blue. I've also got an apple green pencil which I'm going to work in on top of the blue. And see as we're going here, because that area is quite wet, the lines start blending as well, which is really nice. And as that this air, whole area starts to dry off, the lines will become much finer. So I'm just going to keep scribbling around this bit. I'm going to swap pencils again and go over the top with the sea blue. Just totally random. Squeals, we'll swap again just so the blue doesn't take over. And go back over the top with the green. And I think that's looking pretty cool. A couple more final little squeals. Okay, I'm just going to put a few lines across the outer circle. Leave a gap and we bring some down the bottom here. I'm going to go over with the green just in between some of those gaps as well. Not every single one, just the odd one. We have an abstract here, remember. I'm just going to dab over the top of those lines with water just to make sure that everything is getting properly wet and washed out so that it becomes a permanent mark. Work in a little bit there as well. Okay. And then just a final touch. I think maybe we'll just add a little bit of pencil mark around the outside of this. Working into the edge gives it a little bit of extra texture around the edge there. A bit more of a dynamic shape. There we go. We'll just dab over that again, see if we can get some of that pigment shooting out into that shape. 
then I think we've got us a pretty cool shopping bag. I'm just going to work a little bit of yellow into that corner there where it's starting to dry. It's a little bit paler than I'd anticipated. I'll just quickly wash that in. All done. There we go, a lovely, unique shopping bag.